Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. On today's video, I am doing a collaboration with the most wonderful Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. Yes! Took me ages to lock him down, but I got that in there. Uh, you may know him as the guy who likes to experiment with resin and all kinds of different things and shares that experiments with you. You might know him as the cup of tea guy, um, but yeah, I'm quite inspired by his love and his passion to share his knowledge with everybody and encourage people to give resin a go and thinks outside the box. He does way more experiments than that than me, so I learn a lot from him and think, oh, how can I take that to my project? But I'm Sharon. I'm digressing. This collaboration, uh, the theme was set with resin, silhouettes is the title. You can have a little bit of mixed media in there, um, maybe some of eyes, but I don't think that was a big real part of it. So I think overall it was just resins and silhouettes. So I cannot wait to see what Steve has created. So if you haven't seen his channel, I'll put a link at the bottom of my description. Please make sure you pop over, say hello from Sharon. Uh, and have a little look at what he's created. If you come to my channel from Steve's channel, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, I hope you don't mind my slightly long video. Sorry, Steve, I'll keep my intro to under three minutes, I promise. Anyway, products will be linked in my description. I hope you have fun. It's a roller coaster ride. I go down the rabbit hole. I'm sorry, Steve, but this is going up in my room, so I wanted it to be the end result. So I'll talk throughout my video, put a little bit of music in there. Hopefully, you enjoy the process. But can't wait to take you on this journey. Like, subscribe, like, sub <laughs> like, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome because that's how you pay me back the artist for sharing my stuff with you for free. It really helps my channel. Uh, other than that, pop over to my Etsy store. There might be some treasures there for you or join my Facebook group if you want to showcase any of your creations. Anyway, Steve, I hope that I've meet, met the collaboration brief. I'll see you on the other side of this. Bye-bye. You'll see me now preparing my board. Um, it's always harder to remove your resin nipples um, after if you don't protect it, so preparation is key. And I would just say make sure that your board is level. This is a 70 centimetre board. It's a piece that's going up in my wall, so I thought this is a great way to work on a collaboration with the amazing Steve, but also create something that I'm going to hang up in my wall. I'm priming my MDF board with white acrylic paint. I put two coats on there. When you're using anything like MDF, it will release a lot of bubbles. So I think it's important that you do prime your board. I'm continuing my love affair with the Resinate pigment. And I am going with the opaque this time rather than the transparent colours I'm working with. I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever. I just purchased the colours that I want to work with and I'm showcasing them with you. And as you can see, I am ensuring that I've got all my safety equipment on there. So please do take safety measures when working with with resin now i'm going with colors that i specifically purchased for this project because i knew i wanted a sun uh theme a sunset you can see when i put my hand halfway up the board that was me trying to work out where my composition would be for the sun and the reflection and all i'm trying to do at this stage is get colors on canvas because there's nothing worse than starting a project i mean it's exciting but it can be bad so i knew that this first one was really just going to help me understand how do i want the image to be i went down a rabbit hole i did one more layer than what i intentionally wanted to do but that was just working through a process and sometimes you just have to do that with resin if you are a supporter of my channel or you're new to my channel for the first time please remember like subscribe share comments are always welcome that's how you can help me out the artist for sharing my content also remember check my description should you want to know the products that i'm using and click the top right hand if you want to know any other videos of mine anyway let's get on with the project so I am loving the tones here and uh, people who are artists will know that if you want to bring your eye to the centre of the image, you want to do the darks around the outside to draw yourself into the middle. My son went on a journey. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> this is the reason why you've got to make sure that your board is level because it will keep moving as it's curing. And all I'm trying to do here is fill in the gaps, let the res resin then self-level. Try not to muddy some of those colours like your orange and your purples. Uh, but sort of get the vibrancy together, but somehow be organic. Now, a tip I've learnt just about here 
is I am working with a new to me resin which is the Vuba Vista and I'm trying to work out its limitations so I left it for a good 30 minutes before I started working with it and then it took me a while to then apply the colours and as you can see here I'm getting no movement because my resin is just about curing and it's not wanting to go anywhere I can blend it by pulling the sticks through there and I was enjoying some of the, the colours and tones that you were getting by the blending but I really wanted it to be a little bit more organic but Overall, I think the first stage was worth doing. I saw moments of it that was really nice. At the minute, I'm just trying to create the definition between the sky and the ocean. And I'm also trying to understand how I'm going to bring my silhouettes in here. And yeah, just having some fun. And I really enjoyed this. I mean, it, it did take me quite a while. So I think the lessons would have been start working on it slightly earlier. Uh, and I do come in on the second layer and try to correct this. Uh, and I was just having fun so yeah I'll come back in a little while and add a little bit more commentary but before I do bring back Sharon's dodgy FM um, in, in the top screen where you can see me working you'll see I keep glancing over to my computer that's because my monitor's there and a tip for you you get a second Sharon's hot tip is always either have somewhere where you can see your image through a different lens so either take a photo of it or have a look at it through a different focal point which is, to me is my screen because it helps you understand things you're enjoying or not about your composition now here i'm just trying to line up the ripples in the ocean with where the sun was if only the sun would have stayed there uh, and i'm trying to brighten up where the center of the sun is uh yeah so and i've tried to add a subtle horizon line uh, if only that would have stayed straight but <laughs> this is only layer one and like I say this is just for me to help understand where are the tones what I want to work in and what roughly do I want my composition to be but I'm going to leave you to Sharon's Dodgy FM and then I'll come back and talk you through the next part So the idea was I put clear on first because I wanted to try and protect some of the below. But I wanted to redefine my sun and the silhouette in the ocean. So you see me starting to work on that area then. And before you know it, I'd covered the whole thing again. <laughs> now, it, there are still little bits that come through because uh, some of the colours that I add on the second layer are a little bit more transparent. So there is more depth there, but I was committed. What could I say? <laughs> And then this is when my son kept traveling and, you know, there was all kind of dramas like that. But I was determined not to get too stressed and just focus on it because I just had to work with the resin and, you know, see what journey it was going to take me on. And I absolutely love the end result. Now, I know resin's expensive. I'm not saying, you know, add multiple layers for the sake of multiple layers, but... If you're working on a project, you've got to be happy yourself. And it's sometimes hard getting out of your mind where it is that you're seeing on to canvas. Now, what I really knew is I wanted to work with these tones and I really wanted a feeling of tranquility and that sun going down and that warmth because I wanted to create this beautiful backdrop for the silhouettes that are all going to be adding. And I kept saying to myself, Sharon, the backdrop and the ocean is not the hero of the project. <laughs> it's going to be the silhouettes. But then the artist in me is, yes, but I want a beautiful background for my silhouettes to sit in. Anyway, so I'm using the exact same colours here, but I did add the red in here. And I don't know if you can see, but the red, because it's the casting craft, it started to create cells. And I just didn't want cells, but I thought, you know what? 
when you come in and do your third layer you can cover some of those up but i'm adding my dark and i am at least getting deeper emotions in the second layer is what i'm going for still working on the same colors but my sun's starting to fall off as you can see and i'm working with blending through and toning through some of those colors and probably at this moment i'm probably like oh what did i do why am i covering this up uh, and then I work through it and sometimes the battle is worth it or what's happening is worth it because it takes you somewhere that if you would have stopped an earlier stage you would never have got to. so sometimes don't be scared of it and um, there are still bits of layer one that came through but more importantly because it already got resin on there it was stopping air bubbles coming through and I had a better understanding of what it was I was trying to create here I go with the sun again trying to win that battle I do win it in the end right at the 11th hour but come on this journey if you're still with me thank you so much and i'm going to put sharon's dodgy fm on the game for you but before i do that i might not have time now because the next uh, layer's coming up the purple was the other nemesis of me because the board was round and it got a slight concaved edge when i put the purple on the top because the resin was still pushing out because i was working on my image uh, the, res the purple resin at the top kept falling off. Now, you can say, well, why do you keep adding resin then if you know you're at the max? Well, because I was working on my image, so I had to sacrifice some. Now, if you were to put some nice paper down there or a mat, you can tear up all those leftover bits. I ended up scooping them up and adding them to a canvas, just a little one. Um, but it's a trade-off, and I was determined I was going to work through this image. Anyway, I'm just trying to capture my son there. <laughs> Oh, it was an ongoing battle, but uh, I do like how layer one evolved to layer two, and we're about to head into layer three. Now, you're going to see this painting in multiple different angles. That's just because I was turning it around to where I was working on it because it's a 70 centimeter one. Is it 70 centimeters or 70 inches? I think it's 70, 70 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> come on Sharon get your brain working anyway I'm now focusing purely on the separation between uh, the sea and the sky and also where my son is oh here we are see no time for dodgy effort <laughs> so let me talk you through what I'm doing but firstly apologize for my appearance no makeup dodgy hair and also pulling weird faces which is what I do when I'm painting and it's exaggerated when it's speeded up so I've used masking tape. Don't be afraid to use uh, masking tape to help you get your straight line. I'm adding just some purple acrylic, uh, which is able then to help me understand where is my limitation going to be going for my resin, for my sky and my ocean. Uh, the clear is being added because I am going to protect majority of the integrity of the ocean and some of the sky. And I add a little light boob, light boob? like bulb moment which was before I add the sun work on the background to where the sun's going to be and then that way I might have more control on it it still did try and disappear a little bit but we do win the battle in the end but I hope that you are enjoying how this is going through and I'm sorry I've just heard myself say but again I'm going to monitor that to make sure I'm not upsetting people by saying the same word over and over I'm going to put dodgy fm for you or dodgy sharon's fm for you I hope you enjoy watching this process and I'll be back to add some commentary shortly.
Ah, the sun. My nemesis constantly trying to fall off even though I know there is a level board and the purple. Uh, but you know what? We win this battle. This is where I finally get the sun where it needs to be and it stays. And I gradually bring some of the colour through to the sun so it makes it look like the clouds are passing in front of it. So this is the next day. So you can see that the sun slowly drifted to the left still but because I run those lines through they, they ex expanded a little bit but I absolutely love the tones and even though I did lose the purple off the first one or majority of it I'm coming in and I'm adding some more and yes I still struggle to keep the purple on there but this is where I am purposefully now painting with the resin and I'm trying to get the senses of the clouds coming down in different movements as it's heading towards the horizon and I'm now trying to match up the ocean with where the clouds are so just trying to make it all connect and make sense but this is the final layer other than I give it a top coat um, when it's all there after I do my silhouettes uh, so thank you for <laughs> sticking with me nearly 18 minutes in and you still haven't seen the silhouettes but it's worth it I really believe it's worth it because it sets that scenes and I'm adding uh, some really deep colors mixing it in with some clear protecting that base layer and I think that it adds so much depth to it but I'll let you be the judgment on what you think as well and this one I took my time just making sure I'm incredibly happy with my positioning of it again I would have lo loved the purple to have stayed a little bit more at the top but I still sense movement and peace and happiness of being by a beautiful ocean sunset I'm going to put Sharon's dodgy FM because I'll be back very soon to talk you through when I start to introduce the silhouettes hang in there Steve I'm nearly there and if you haven't popped over and seen Steve's video yet for the collaboration pop over say hello from Sharon have a look where he's created Steve I'll be over there very soon can't wait to see what you've done and I hope you're enjoying this project so far So I'm really enjoying my resin work and where this has come to 
and because this is going on my wall I wanted to add a little bit of fine tuning that could only be given with acrylic paint now this is an optional extra you don't have to do it I'm working on the line that was already there in the distance and just embellishing a little bit just to help with that contrast and to make the distance look far away and you'll see me work on it. I pull the, the line back so it becomes a little bit thinner, but I, I, I only highlight certain sections of it. You're then going to see me come in and add a few highlights to the clouds. Again, that's just in the very distant clouds that where the horizon line is. That to me just makes the painting good to great. And I can just have more control in it this way. With resin, it would be very hard. And I am going to be painting my silhouettes in soon. Uh, so there will be a clear coat of resin going over the top of that and so that will make them all pop and make it all come together i'm trying to make sure i get some reflections of where the sun's hitting the top of the clouds and you only ever see me add these into the um horizon line for the ocean and the skyline i come and add some reflections onto the oceans and the tendency can be to overwork it when you add some ripples in the ocean you might think oh that looks good so you'll carry on and that actually destroys the composition so little is best with such as this so have a little look strip it back and your mind will fill the rest of the space you'll also see me coming in and adding three thin lines uh, with purple i then add a little bit of red and a little bit of orange to the top of them that's a, to trick your brain into a suggestion of ocean lapping and it just adds so much value the the biggest one i added to the foreground made it look like that really dark area is sand area now it's not meant to be that it was meant to still be an ocean but dark near you but it also adds it to looking at like it is um joining the beach so i suppose it's subjective so this is where it starts to pop and i get a real satisfaction for all that hard work that we've done and and just these lines in itself it, it's just amazing what it does to your brain now people who are proficient artists out there my composition is not going to be correct when it comes to size and proportions but this is my magic world and it can be whatever it wants to be so please don't tell me that in the comments i know that but it's oh i'm getting to my dolphins now so my silhouettes are coming in what i was going to say is this is my piece of heaven and i don't care if uh, proportionally it is correct this is just about giving me some pleasure to look at it and and see where they are anyway with my dolphins i drew dolphins onto tracing paper in different sizes and different things and then i cut them round so that i could play around with them on my painting before i committed to it once I was happy with where they were going to be, that's when I committed to it and painted them in with acrylic paint. I started with a dark blue and then I came back with the uh, black over the top of it. So these are my silhouettes. I was originally going to do five and then I spoke to my girl pal girl Claire from Claire's Crafty Corner and she had a look at the photo and we both agreed that three was ideal. Five probably would have taken away from the tranquility and the beauty of the nature and this sunset. But what do you think when you see me adding those extra two? Would you have gone for five? Would you have gone for one? Like, Let me know your thoughts in this. The benefit of painting the dolphins as opposed to getting my uh, Cricut Joy out is that I could just um, get the, one, the style that I wanted in the place that I wanted it and it might have made it a bit harder. I mean, it might have made it easy for myself, Sharon. Come on, who are you kidding? <laughs> but I do enjoy uh, connecting with a paintbrush sometimes. Anyway... I enjoyed this one here. He's he's following uh, the ones before him and he's heading off into that sunset. Uh, the challenge for me was thinking, how do I make them look like they're actually jumping out of the ocean and they are not uh, floating in midair? Now, these are the first dolphins I've done and not bad for a first attempt. Now, this is where some people will say, Sharon, if the reflections come in from in front of the dolphins, you wouldn't see the reflection of the water yellow from behind but again i know that i don't care i just felt it helped with the sereneness of this piece and i enjoy them anyway you see me also working through the ripple of the dolphins coming out of the ocean and the water trailing off them if they've just jumped out of that and I, I, I work on it i go backwards and forwards but i actually do enjoy what value that adds to the painting so i'd love your thoughts on that i mean do you think your painting should always be real realism i mean you may as well take a photo of it if that's the case i think sometimes making the impossible possible in your art 
I sound like I'm trying to sell it to myself, don't I? I love it anyway. But I did enjoy this part. And uh, we're nearly at the end. So I just want to say thank you so much for your time. And thank you for your support. And it's been a pleasure. I can't wait to collab again with you, Steve. And I hope that you feel that this meets the brief. And yeah, I'm going to put Sharon's Dodgy FM on for one last time. You can see Zeus there just walking away and you can see me. There is nowhere good for me to stand so you can capture the essence of this colour without you seeing me or oh, the high reflection. I've tried people. We'll keep this short and sweet because it was a long video. Thank you for your patience. And I know when I'm looking at it from a perspective point of view, the proportions are not correct so the people that are going to say that i already know that but this is supposed to be a piece of magic and something i enjoy and the hero of this piece is meant to be the silhouettes i know the sun sets in competition with it but the silhouettes are what give me the tranquility of the three dolphins so what i'm talking about from a perspective point of view is the dolphins are quite near uh the front here now, my partner, Neil, feels that that's the shoreline. That's where he sees. I don't necessarily see that. I just see the open ocean. And because the sun's coming this way, you wouldn't necessarily get the highlights of the water at the back of the tail. However, to help them look like they're flying and jumping, I wanted to do that. But I absolutely love so much of this piece. Got my silhouette bird and got my little boat. So there's my silhouette. So I hope, Steve, that's met the brief. But I love the sunset and the clouds and this warm colour that's coming through down here onto the ocean. And then these beautiful uh, dark clouds coming. And the suggestions of where these three waves are just rippling a little bit in that calm ocean. All right, so I've added my light to see if that's going to help. I still think that you're seeing the same image, but the glitter... You can now see it ignites. So it's very subtle. You can't see it when you first come onto it. But then, different angles, you just get that tiny little bit of glitter. And that just, to me, 
just adds to the magic of it all. You may not want that, it's an optional choice, but look at those warm tones. Doesn't that just make you want to watch a sunset over the ocean? Anyway, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Remember to visit my Facebook group if you want to showcase your art. And other than that, pop over and visit Steve's creation. I can't wait to see what he's created with his silhouettes. We had our imagination and able to do whatever he wanted. So pop over and shine some love. Other than that, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I cannot wait to see you on the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.